Good morning, good afternoon, good evening all over the world. Dobson 777 Alpha here. This video is going to be a mishmash of a whole bunch of stuff, but I'm going to start off with showing you how to grow onions because I think I have the recipe down. This was a fantastic year. I've tried a couple different things over the last couple years, but I think I've got it for my area now. That's all you got to do is just keep trying. Remember, do the best you can. So let's start. Let me show you step by step of what I did with my onions and how I came across with uh, this particular uh, process. I start from Dixondale Farms. I don't know why I chose them, but I kind of went through different things and I liked everything that they had online. It was kind of a, a really neat uh, capability and I uh, can't remember if it's been two or three years since I've done this. Last year I had a fairly good success, but this year has been outstanding. And so let me show you what we did. For the first thing you have to do is you have to decide where you live. And this is, you can do this any country, but try to figure out um, you know, whether you're supposed to do short day, intermediate day, or long day onions. Now it turns out I'm kind of up here in the North Georgia area. And so this indicates that you could grow either short day or intermediate day onions. Now last year I drew, grew short day. This year I grew intermediate day and I feel like I had much better success. And I'm pretty confident I did everything the same way. <clears throat> and I grew exactly the same varieties of onions too. So that, that didn't change. I'm growing in raised beds in my front yard and uh, they came out fantastic. So let's, let's go through what is the process that you're supposed to do. Uh, so once you decide this, you can see this had overlap, but there isn't overlap up in this area. So um, decide what you want to do. But in my area, intermediate day worked, worked better. So this is what I, what I chose. I didn't know I was going to zoom in on it like that, but uh, the onions, uh, you know, are a mixture of several different types and you can see um, there's like a red, a white, and a yellow. This is, you know, sweet, not quite as sweet and more bitter. Kind of use this for salads and stuff, but um, I think I got uh, five packs of these things and uh, it was tons of onions because each pack has 50 to 70 onions. Now the secret on this is you have to create a, um, I have four by eight beds. And so I would make three, three rows of onions. And so I'd have fertilizing on the outside. I'd have an onion set. I'd have fertilizer here. Then I'd have an onion. And then I'd have fertilizer here, an onion, and then fertilizer here. So I'd have uh, three rows. And then I found um, as the onions started completely bulbing, uh, started bulbing, I actually, in between where the fertilizer was, I would plant beets. I would plant uh, radishes and carrots, and they seemed to grow very well in that fertilized area. Uh, and so I ended up kind of doubling up on the bed. So later when the onions came out, I had the next crop already going. Like right now I've got actually, my, my radishes already been pulled out and my carrots are not quite ready yet. But this is what I would do. This is a very simple process. You look at this, how you would do. So the question is, what do you use for fertilizer? Well, when and I would plant in December, early December. I'd order these things where they'd come in December. And that sounds crazy. You're planting just before uh, winter. And I would do the same thing with my garlic, same thing. You, uh, they tell you to plant on the shortest day and harvest on the long day, longest day. So that's how you can remember. But I'd order these things in like October or something. They'd show up early December and I'd be out there planting. Now. For fertilizer, I would use 10-10-10 initially, and then I'd come supplement. I, I got the highest nitrogen I could find at Home Depot was like a 3400, and then I'd start mixing that 3400 in with the 10-10-10 uh, when it was starting to bulb. But I'd start out with 10-10-10 fertilizer. They actually will tell you in here to use 10-20-10, but I can't find that anywhere. So you might be able to find something to mix in, but I'm gonna tell you the 10-10-10 worked perfect. And uh, so I would use that fertilizer all the way until like February or March. Then I'd start adding the nitrogen and uh, then the things would start bulbing. Now, the other thing I would do is when the onions started, uh, I would plant them fairly close together. And when they started bulbing, um, I could tell that they needed to have room. So I'd pull out every other onion when they were say two inches in diameter or so. And I'd start using those onions and then uh, 
like a month and a half later, the other onions would be ready to be fully harvested, and I'd pull those out, and of course they'd be humongous. Uh, let me show you some of the pictures. And these are my onions after I've trimmed them and removed the roots, and I've just got them sitting out here drying for a couple more days before I bag them, but I've tried a couple different things where I've hung them up from the rafters while they still got the green part on the end of it. Uh, the best thing i found is, and people, you, you see a lot of arguments on this, but I think next year I'm going to end up bending the, uh, the green tops uh, when they get to the bulb size that I'm looking for and uh, so that it helps in the drying process because a lot of these, they were, the onion was still trying to grow uh, when I was trying to cure them. And so I think bending it over, I think, helps with that process. Uh, the second batch of the larger ones, I ended up just going ahead and uh, cutting about three inches from the top and uh, going in and removing the roots and setting them up on this table and just letting them dry like that rather than having the uh, top on there. But there's quite a few that I'm going to have to use right away because, of, like I said, the uh, top part was still growing out of the onion even after I picked them. So that, uh, it's, it just doesn't cure properly when that happens. All right, you might notice something. My onion beds are starting to thin out. I pulled all of the yellow and purple onions yesterday. And now all I've got is my white onions. So I'm about ready to pull them out. Let me go show you what this looks like. Several weeks ago, I pulled out my first harvest where the onions, you plant them fairly close together and then you harvest every other one to allow these uh, to continue bulbing. And I just want to show you the size of a lot of these things. I mean, that's that's a good size onion. It's, this is actually very simple. Anybody can do this. I'm not an expert by any means in growing onions, except amongst my friends. My friends are amazed at how uh, good my onions turn out. Uh, they, I'm, and I'm doing this uh, video for my friends because uh, I tell them every year exactly what I do, but. Uh, they don't listen so now they can follow this exactly and hopefully they'll have the same results this is very simple all right we're about ready to get a bunch of rain so i've had my onions out here drying as you know and i decided to bag them up so you can see what we've got but here's my white onions really good size and these are big bags i thought i bought way too big big of bags but it's actually a perfect size i have no idea how much weight they're in these things but look at the size of that yellow onion good yellow onion and then purple onions. And then these were the ones that I pulled out first. And then also as I was bagging them, I took any of them that had like a little softness to them. And I'm going to eat those right away. So there, some of these are the smaller ones. And then other ones that, like I said, I just need to eat right away. So this is a mixture of yellow and purple. And then those are a bunch of white. So I put these in the kitchen and I'll be eating these first. And then these I'm going to take down in the basement. Go ahead and hang them up and they'll uh they'll last a long time but that's that's one harvest for me fantastic harvest uh, onions are about the easiest things in the world to grow i mean i'm just following what the manufacturer tells you to do but uh, i do it very simply because i'm not doing it commercially but man these are good sized onions i mean look at those things in the bag they're fantastic fun to have your friends over because they all try to do it and they they don't follow any recipe yet i do and it works fine all right, I decided to get some weights here. That uh, left bottom bucket, yellow onions, 25 pounds. The white onion bucket, 21 pounds. The purple onion bag was 28 pounds. The 36 pound white onion bag and a 42 pound yellow onion bag for a total of 152 pounds out of my front garden. Not bad at all. All right, I wanted to show you the difference of what you get in the store, which is probably about this size for yellow squash. But uh, you can see that I can grow much, much larger. And even like uh, Green Giant would be proud of uh, my other squash. Like here's some zucchini. I don't even have a normal zucchini here that uh, you would get in the store. They're probably, probably closer to uh, like this size. And you can see how much bigger my stuff is. So um, it's, it's amazing what you can do when you grow things yourself. Um, I'm still having to grow a few tomatoes, I mean buy a few tomatoes because I don't have uh, any tomatoes coming off the vine yet. It'll probably be another week or so. But anyways, look at the squash. That's impressive as heck. Alright, things you just don't see every day. 
this poor little bird got stuck inside the bird feeder trying to get the feed out. So I've got to open this thing up and get it out of here. And Dougie's like, what is going on? That's what I said this morning. That sucker I think's been in there all night. All right, so let's see if I can get this apart. All right, you can see they've got uh, their new feathers on now. And they are getting nice and plump. Basically have a month left. In fact, this is where I'm just about done with this bag of 22% protein and I'm going to move them down to 20% uh, now for the last month. You can tell there's a big size difference between some of these and that's the difference between the uh, roosters and the hens. The roosters will mature much faster. Over there you can see my uh, Rhode Island red hens. They're start, starting to tunnel now, so I've had to put a rock over here because they were digging a hole to try to get in the other pen. Everybody's looking great. Can you mind? I, I wanted to do a video. Shh, 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 shh. Okay? Shh. It never works the way you want, but I just wanted to show you I had a full jailbreak this morning of all my uh, Rhode Island Reds. So I'm going to start disassembling this cage because it's not doing any good. They're getting so big now. Why are you doing this? Hey, come on. Do you mind? Do you mind? Oh my God. Anyways. I got to I'm going to take out the center divider and just let these guys intermingle. Okay, it's time for me to seal my driveway and before you do that, you need to do some prep work. Obviously, you got to kind of clean your driveway, you know, get the edges back, but at the same time, any cracks that you have in your asphalt driveway, you need to fill them. So, I've tried several different things over the years and I've not been happy with any of the normal stuff you get from the big box stores, but I found this online. I think I got it from Amazon, but it's called Crack Sticks. And it's basically a rope of tar that's, uh, you just kind of lay it across where the crack is and then you use one of these uh, big torches um, and it melts and does a, actually a pretty doggone good job. So I'm gonna show you a little bit about that. And I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this to tell you the truth. Excuse me, it says that they've got this at Lowe's but I think you have to order it and it'll be delivered. I didn't find it in the store there, so I, I think I got mine from Amazon. But anyways, that's uh, look at what I've done. All right, it's pretty simple. You just lay this uh, rope-like stuff out, and I found out, uh, you know, put it outside the day before so that it uh, has a chance to kind of warm up because I had it inside this morning. And it's a little stiff when you're uh, working with it. So if you let it warm up out here in the sun, then it's more malleable and it lays out but I'm just doing a couple seams here we had to repair in the driveway and I did a bunch of areas up there I'll show you in a minute but you just lay it like this and then you just torch it in I just finished a long section here and I've got one little spot that I want to double up on it so I just put a little piece and it looks like I bought exactly the right amount it says there's a uh, 125 feet so that's pretty cool. So I got exactly the right amount to do my driveway. All right, so I'm out here uh, sealing some cracks in my driveway. And uh, this is actually kind of a unique product. You've got this rope of uh, tar that's just basically wrapped in a little bit of plastic that just melts away. And it actually works really well. It fills in gaps super nice. You just take one of these uh, torches with a propane tank. I've had one of these for years. So I'm out here in the sun, it's really hard to see. But 
but I need to coat my driveway so the first thing you do is you seal any significant cracks with this stuff when you get like 250 feet of this I'll have to put a uh, it's called crack sticks I don't know if you can see it way over there I think I just got this on Amazon I've tried all kinds of stuff that they had at Home Depot and I didn't like it nearly as much as this got to be patient. I probably already used half the bucket so I've been practicing and have a pretty good idea. This really uh, doesn't work that well in uh, like on a slope though. I've noticed it just kind of runs. And you'll have to come back and hit this uh, some of the bigger cracks more than once. Just kind of melt it in. Let it. It's almost like soldering if you've ever soldered. out of here right now. See how it's blowing right there. This will turn out but here's some of the cracks that I filled and the hardest ones were to do when it's on a slope because it just wants to run down the slope there were a couple really big cracks it took about uh, two of the runs to be able to fill those up here's a long one that's a seam and this uh, this runs this whole length and what it's done is it's filled up the lower end, but not necessarily the top, because again, it'll just run down the crack. But this is still, this is still did a pretty good job. Looks like I need to come back over here and hit this one more time, but I'm out of stuff. So that's kind of it. When I get the driveway coated, it'll fill in the rest. Anyways, that's it. I hope everybody's treating you well. I hope you're doing well. Do the best you can. God bless. All right, go party. We gonna go bye bye? Are we gonna go bye bye? Are we gonna go bye bye? Are we gonna go bye bye? Yeah. All right. You going to get in the car? We're not quite ready. I'm almost ready. You almost ready? Okay. I tell you, you got to walk all around your property and pay attention to things, but I got tons of blackberries that are ready to be harvested, so I got to go get a little cup and uh, fill these things up. I was just shocked when I walked down here. I go, hey, what's that? So, guess what? I got a little treat right now. Doug Doug has a new toy. Doug Doug has a new toy. Let me see it. You got a new toy? He's so happy. It's a little rabbit. Does that make you happy? Whoops. Got a little wag going on, huh? Happy boy.